Jesus said about false prophets. Beware of the false prophets, teachers who come to you dressed as sheep, appearing gentle and innocent, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them, that is, by their contrived doctrine and self-focus. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the unhealthy tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore by their fruit you will recognize them as false prophets. Matthew chapter 7 verses 15 to 20. On that narrow road, disciples are to watch out for false prophets. On that narrow path, Disciples must beware of false prophets. Jesus has warned against religious leaders who deceive the public with their false form of righteousness. Still, he warns against revolutionary leaders who mislead the public with their false form of prophecy. Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. For I say to you, that unless your righteousness, uprightness, moral lessons, is more than that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. Be very careful not to do your good deeds publicly to be seen by men. Otherwise, you will have no reward prepared and awaiting you with your Father who is in heaven. False prophet warnings are an important theme in Matthew's gospel, just as they were in the Old Testament. Ezekiel chapter 22 verses 27 to 29. Her princes within her are like wolves tearing and devouring the prey, shedding blood and destroying lives in order to get dishonest gain. Her prophets have smeared whitewash for them, seeing false visions and divining lies for them, saying, Thus says the Lord God, when the Lord has not spoken. The people of the land have practiced oppression and extortion, and have committed robbery. They have wronged the poor and needy, and they have oppressed the stranger without justice. These were warnings against those who attempted to lead God's people by falsely speaking for God. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. This expression draws on the natural enmity of sheep and wolves, and is the basis of the Apostle Paul's later warning to the Ephesian elders. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 25. The wolf and the lamb will graze together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. There will no longer be predator and prey, and dust will be the serpent's food. They will do no evil or harm in all my holy mountain, Zion, says the Lord. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 6. And the wolf will dwell with the lamb, and the leopard will lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the young lion and the fatted steer together, and a little child will lead them. Matthew chapter 7 verses 1 to 6. Do not judge and criticize and condemn others unfairly with an attitude of self-righteous superiority, as though assuming the office of a judge, so that you will not be judged unfairly. For just as you hypocritically judge others when you are sinful and unrepentant, so will you be judged, and in accordance with your standard of measure, used to pass out judgment, judgment will be measured to you. Why do you look at the insignificant speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice and acknowledge the egregious log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me get the speck out of your eye, when there is a log in your own eye. You hypocrite, play actor, pretender. First get the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give that which is holy to dogs, and do not throw your pearls before pigs, for they will trample them under their feet, and turn and tear you to pieces.
maintaining the earlier balance of not judging another brother or sister, yet not being naively accepting either. Jesus tells his disciples to be wisely discerning when prophets come into their midst. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Fruit is the product of a person's essential life. All that a person says and does reveals who they are. James chapter 3 verses 9 to 12 With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men, who have been made in the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth come both blessing and cursing. These things, my brothers, should not be this way, for we have a moral obligation to speak in a manner that reflects our fear of God and profound respect for His precepts. Does a spring send out from the same opening both fresh and bitter water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, produce olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Nor can salt water produce fresh. When the Sadducees and Pharisees showed up for baptism, John the Baptist scolded them and told them to produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Matthew chapter 3 verse 8 So produce fruit that is consistent with repentance, demonstrating new behavior that proves a change of heart and a conscious decision to turn away from sin. Repentance in their hearts will manifest itself in a changed lifestyle that turns away from sin. In a similar vein, Paul later tells the Church of Galatia to examine their own lives and the lives of the false teachers, because those who genuinely belong to Christ will bear the fruit of the Spirit, not the works of the flesh. Galatians chapter 5 verses 16 to 24 But I say, Walk habitually in the Holy Spirit. Seek Him and be responsive to His guidance. And then you will certainly not carry out the desire of the sinful nature, which responds impulsively without regard for God and His precepts. For the sinful nature has its desire which is opposed to the Spirit, and the desire of the Spirit opposes the sinful nature. For these two, the sinful nature and the Spirit, are in direct opposition to each other, continually in conflict, so that you as believers do not always do whatever good things you want to do. But if you are guided and led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the practices of the sinful nature are clearly evident. They are sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, total irresponsibility, lack of self-control, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions that promote heresies, envy, drunkenness, riotous behavior, and other things like these. I warn you beforehand, just as I did previously, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit, the result of His presence within us, is love, unselfish concern for others, joy, inner peace, patience, not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature together with its passions and appetites. The mark of a church that is growing in Christ is the fruit of righteousness and good works. Philippians chapter 1 verse 11 Filled with the fruit of righteousness which comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God, so that His glory may be both revealed and recognized. Colossians chapter 1 verse 10 So that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, displaying admirable character, moral courage, and personal integrity, to fully please Him in all things, bearing fruit in every good work, and steadily growing in the knowledge of God, with a deeper faith, clearer insight, and fervent love for His precepts. 
And the Apostle John calls the church to test the spirit of prophets, to see whether they are led by the spirit to confess that Jesus indeed has come in the flesh. 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. Beloved, do not believe every spirit speaking through a self-proclaimed prophet. Instead, test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets and teachers have gone out into the world. By this, you know and recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges and confesses the fact that Jesus Christ has actually come in the flesh, as a man, is from God. God is its source. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus, acknowledging that he has come in the flesh, but would deny any of the Son's true nature, is not of God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming, and is now already in the world. Therefore, Jesus instructs his disciples to carefully evaluate any prophets who come into their community. Not only are they to examine the message of the prophets to determine whether or not it is consistent with the way that Jesus advocates, but they are also to examine the prophets' works and lives to determine whether or not they are consistent with a life of righteousness in the kingdom that Jesus has advocated. Do people harvest grapes from thistle bushes or figs from thorn bushes? In Palestine, grapes and figs made up the majority of a person's diet whereas thorn bushes and thistles were considered to be harmful weeds. The latter choke off nutrients from other plants and are harmful to humans because of their sharp thorns. A dangerous weed cannot produce healthful fruit. Without the moving of God in their lives, false prophets cannot speak God's message and cannot display the kingdom righteousness he produces. Because a vine or tree will only produce fruit that is consistent with its nature, good to good and bad to bad, Jesus instructs his disciples to be fruit inspectors of those posing as prophets. False prophets will bear bad fruit, which in the Old Testament includes leading people away from God to worship false gods or speaking prophecies that do not come true. Deuteronomy chapter 13 verses 1 and 2 if a prophet arises among you, or a dreamer of dreams, and gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder which he spoke, foretold to you, comes to pass, and if he says, Let us follow after other gods, whom you have not known, and let us serve and worship them. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 21 and 22 If you say in your heart, how will we know and recognize the word which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord and the thing does not happen or come true, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. Bad trees are good for nothing except to be used for firewood, a striking metaphor of the judgment to come for false prophets. Matthew chapter 7 verse 19 Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Matthew chapter 7 verse 20 Therefore, by their fruit you will recognize them as false prophets. Jesus then repeats, Thus, by their fruit you will recognize them.